Hey guys, it's Agoisi Delmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to take the time to ask you to subscribe to the channel because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. And today I'm going to be continuing the procedural generation that I implemented previously. I show you the new features that I added on the previous video, but I didn't go into the source code to show you how they were implemented. So what I'm going to do today is actually show you some of those features been implemented such as scriptable objects that I added and also a new gizmos that I added and then some new changes that I did when you toggle from a cube to a quad. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. Alright guys, so let me show you a couple more things that I added from the time that I posted the previous video to this video. So we now have a new component which is called the grid line and what that allows me to do is create a bounding box. In this case is red because I assign a color of red, but I could change it if I wanted to change it to a different color. You could also change the grid offset. So if I wanted to go lower on X, you can kind of see how that is changing. If I wanted to go higher on Y, you can also change that as well. You can now may maybe place it on the very bottom if you wanted to. So I'm going to change it back to one, one, and I think A works. The other option that I have is if I deselect this item, you can see that I still see the bounding box. And let me make this, see, let me make it maybe a four. I think that, that looks better. So if I deselect this item, it still renders that box, but there's also an option that I added to, to change that behavior. So I could say just on selection, if I deselect it, it doesn't show. If I select it, it shows. So you can always change it back to always and it will always render. Also, if I change the if I change the width, you can see that the bounding box also renders and it gets resized as I change the width of the component. So I can also do the same thing with the height. If I want to go and change the height, that also changes. The other thing, let me go lower here, let's do 20, and then we can do 20 and 20. And the other thing that I can also do is I can change the max random height, so I can go smaller, and you can see that the bounding box. So the bounding box basically uses the bounds, and the bounds are calculated by using a method that I'm going to show you in the code in a few seconds. So that's basically most of the stuff that I added here. The other thing that I wanted to show you was the shape type. This wasn't working on the previous video. In this video it now works. I changed the implementation. So now if you do a qua, it basically renders a qua. If I want to change the, let's say I wanted to change the, the width, you can change the width of the qua. I can also change the height. I can't change it because there's really, it's a flat surface. So there is really no height. So even if you change it here, it won't really do anything. But if I change the depth, I can also change the depth if I wanted to. And that works as well. So the other thing that I can do is I can change, okay, I want to go to a cube. You'll see that all the settings are, you know, are they basically didn't get removed. They are serialized so you can regenerate everything. If I go back to Aqua, it basically makes a quad. So, so that part works. And the reason why I'm making quads is because I want to be able to add a layer. And that other layer, which I'm going to be adding in the next videos, is going to be the roads. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have a cube. The cubes, they're going to be buildings. And the buildings are going to be you know, generated just like they are. We might add some space in between the buildings by changing some of the margins. But I'm also going to be generating roads. And I'm going to use the, the quads that I'm generating randomly to basically create those roads. So I'm still not 100% sure how I'm going to do it. I have a brief idea, you know, a small idea on how to approach it. So I'll be showing you that, that next. So the other thing that I want to show you is the code. So let me go ahead and jump into the code and show you some of the things that I, that I added. So if we pull the grid implementation, which was the previous implementation, and I'm basically going to collapse the tree view so that we can do some comparisons. So in the grid implementation, we had all the different variables here. Anything that we wanted to change for the procedural generation, we would change here. We had the ranges and, you know, and all of that was in here. It was, it was really, really hard to maintain. And not only that, but I couldn't really, if I wanted to create another building, let's say that you want to build, building one was going to be, you know, a certain height or width, and then building two was going to be, you know, it has different parameters. In order for to make this work, you would need to clone a game object and assign a different grid. And that works fine, but I think it's cleaner if you do if you use an scriptable object to do that. And that's what I'm using in this version. So that's the version that I want to show you. 
And if I go back into Unity and you look at the what I'm getting here, I have a procedural parameter, and this is the scriptable object that I'm talking about, and it's associated by basically creating one of those files. So I also added an editor to this, which is why you can now right click in here, do create, and then click on procedural parameters. And I can say, okay, I want to create a new one. So this is gonna be four. I can go back to this one and associate that one that I just created, which it doesn't have any settings just yet. And I can go ahead and, you know, start designing my my building and I can change, say I wanted to change the, change the height, I could do that. And I could also change, you know, change some of these and looks like I still have an error, I'll, I'll fix that. But but you get the idea. I now can control these parameters by using a scriptable object. object. And, and that's really powerful. So now if I wanted to go back, I could say, okay, I wanna use three. And then maybe three, I don't like how it looks. I wanted to, maybe I'll change this to say, you know, maybe this is, I want 20 different colors. And maybe the height, it's going to be, you know, much larger. There we go. So we created a new scriptable object and I also created a, you know, a new file and associated that new file with the parameters. So what you see right now, the parameters option is basically this object. If we go into that object, which I'm gonna basically snap on the right so that we can see it. And let me just, there we go, so we can see both. So, so basically what I did is I took all the different parameters that were serialized and I moved it into this into this scriptable object. And the way that you do that, if you haven't done a scriptable object before, is you inherit from a scriptable object and basically all the variables that are gonna be here are gonna be serializable or you can make it public. So I made them all public and also made it a serializable field because I pretty much copy what I had. And then I added all the different ranges. And you can notice that I don't have any previous values anymore. So if we go back to the grid, the way that I was detecting changes, I was basically checking the previous width versus the, the new, the current width. And if those were if those were different, I know that there was a change, so therefore I would generate the new grid, which is, it was done by looking at, so if we look at detect, let's see property, yeah, there we go. If property change was true, meaning that some of those variables were modified, which, I mean, this works, but it wasn't as clean as I want it to be. So on the new version, I don't have to do that. And the reason why I don't have to do that is because I'm creating, I created an editor extension and that editor allows me to track when somebody makes a change in the inspector. If I make a change in the inspector, I trigger an event and that event basically regenerates the grid. So, so that's what I, what I did on the, you know, by adding a scriptable object and the other thing that is really important to know is if you want to create a file for a scriptable object, which, you know, for the most part you would, you would you will basically create an attribute on the class level, which is called create asset menu. You provide the file name that you want this to have by default, which in this case is procedural parameter. And then you can determine, you know, where to place it. I wanted to put it on the procedural and then the option was parameter and the other was zero. And that's basically what you see when you do create, that's procedural, parameter, and the order is zero. If I had more scriptable objects, I could basically change the order, have the same folder, but basically change the order will determine where that new option will show in the menu. So that's basically what procedural params do for me here. And I also made it serializable because I wanted to change it through the inspector. So I could basically select another one and that's what gives me that functionality. So I can now close out of that. And the other thing that I did, I still have a grid and it's a, it's a two dimensional array. So that didn't change. I still have my procedural materials and then my UI. And then the other thing that I added was a new, a bounds because I, want to, I wanted to control the, and calculate the bounds of all the objects that I'm adding to this grid. So what I do is I create a, I create a private variable, I serialize it because I want to save it. And then I also want to, want to expose that through the inspector, which is why you see that part right here. So let me show you some other things. Basically the reset method is, didn't change at all. The other thing that I added was basically I create a new instance of bounds and I initialize it to zero, zero. 
The star matter vector basically calls build grade, so that didn't change. None of these things change. And let me just go down to, to some of the things that did change that are really important to know. The, the other thing that I noticed is the, that the structures were always getting position at the center. And, and that was because I was using, I was basically using position instead of local position. So the reason why that is important to me is because if, if I want to clone this object, let's say that I want to add another object, and then this one might be, you know, in that area, this one might be in this area. And the I want to be able to change that. I want to be able to say, okay, I want this one to be, you know, building four. And I think this one is also building, oh no, this one's building three, this one's building four. Let me select a different building that doesn't look too similar. There we go, something like that works. And let me just clear everything out here. I think I still have some changes to make on the way that it that is clear, basically clearing things out. Let's go ahead and change this to underscore one and this one underscore two so that we can see the differences. And then I'm just gonna regenerate it. And let me see what's happening with this. And I don't think the bounding box is working well when I'm when I have multiple objects because you can see that this one doesn't have the proper size and in fact it's also not changing if I move it around so that's another thing that I need to that I need to fix so the so let me go ahead and disable that here and then disable that one as well there we go there we go so if we go ahead and regenerate this I can see that it's regenerating at that position I can also, if I wanted to go bigger on this one, I could do that and then I can change this other one. And they are all independent of each other. So I could say, you know, I can change that one. And, and that's helpful because if I want to generate multiple, you know, multiple buildings and maybe different cities with different setups, now I can control that. I still need to fix the grid line. So for now, just ignore those errors and then I'll make sure to fix it on the next video or prior to the next video so that I can show you what I what I changed. So let me just go ahead and enable that back and so that we can see and I'm gonna go down on the let's make it smaller and then maybe we there we go. Something like that. Let me just clear this error. Alright and rename this back. So so now you know like I like I show you I can move it around and I can still regenerate everything and it's gonna regenerate at that point at the local position of this of this subject so which is great because I can move it around that didn't work before so let me go ahead and go back to to the original position which is there and we can regenerate it so that we get the bounding box at the proper location all right and there we go and let me just go down down here let's go back to the code so so that's what I'm using local position and I updated that as well on the grid itself which is the old version. So that should also work on that version. I'm also changing the size randomly. I show you how it works in the inspector, but uh, but this is how it was basically coded. So anywhere where I need to use parameters or in the grid, it was basically you know, reading the private variable from the top. In this one, I'm basically doing par parameters that shape width because that's coming from this, you know, from this class. So if I go back down, you gotta see that everywhere I'm, I'm referencing to parameters and then that for and then doing a dot to get the property. All right, let me let me see where we were. Awesome. And not only I do that, but I also calculate. So if I need to calculate the position of, of you know a row zero and column zero, I basically grab the shape width and multiply it by the row. And then I also change the you know, I want to change the size and I randomize the size. So I'm using random that range. I start at one and then I grab the max value. I do the same thing with the shape, you know, the shape depth for the columns. I, you know, I start at one and then I get the max value to generate a number between one and zero, which is basically going to regenerate the position where this needs to be placed. The, and I was talking about sizes and this is actually the position. Sizes are done down here where this wasn't here before i'm now doing some things different based on the shape and the reason for that is because not always i want to create a cube 
in the previous video or the previous versions that you saw the code, this was referenced to cube. So because cube is also inheriting from shape and quad is also inheriting from shape, all I'm doing here is basically creating a variable of type shape. If the shape type that the user selected is of cube, basically I create a cube, otherwise I create a quad. And if you didn't watch the previous videos, I'm creating these ones from scratch. So if I go into definition, you'll see that we're creating the vertices, we're creating the normals, the triangles, and also we, we need to still create the UVs. Once I start adding textures, we'll do that. So there, the difference between this one and this one is this one is creating a flat quad, it's not a cube, and then it only needs two different sizes, it only needs the width and also the depth. So I also wanted to randomize the width and this is where it's getting done. So I grab the parameters that shape width and then I multiply that by a random number that goes from one to the max random width that the user selected. So I do the same thing with the height and then depth. So if we go back into Unity, that's what makes these all these shapes you know have different heights because that the random height that I selected is nine. If I wanted to go to something like one, everything is gonna go from one to one and from one to one, you're gonna get one. But if I go from one to maybe 20, kind of see that I'm getting you know a big variety of sizes on the height. So I can go back down to let's say seven. So we don't make two, make him that tall and I can also change of course I can change the offset if I if I wanted to so that's why that's how I determine you know how to create a cube how to create a quad and then also how to place the objects on the grid so the other thing that I also did which is really cool because I'm using inheritance is I'm calling the shape that generate the generate and if it's a quad or if it's using a cube it'll know you know what method to call so if I go to the generate method right now this one is abstract in the shape class if we go into the quad that's basically we're overriding that method which is which is happening on the quad and I'm doing the same thing for the cube so again because I'm using inherit inheritance I'm basically calling shape that generate and then shape will be the type of shape that you're generating and therefore it'll call the method in those classes all right, so most of this is basically the same where we're determining if we need to generate procedural materials or if the user is selecting materials. I'm also, I also added a new option, which I showed you in the previous video, but I didn't show you the code on how to generate rigid bodies. So if we go back here and I go and say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna hit play and I wanna see how the rigid bodies will affect. Maybe we want to, you know, somehow have a car that goes through and or maybe a monster and it starts destroying these buildings so that's what i have the that's what i have the rigid bodies for and i can go ahead and click on it regenerate it and you can see how they are falling and i can also change the the width you can see that they're going to explode because there are now rigid bodies associated with them so let me go ahead and go back and then hit pause play to to basically go back to edit mode and then we can uncheck that i'm also going to set the random width back to let's go ahead and change it back to one there we go so that's what rigid bodies is for i'm basically adding a box collider and i'm also adding a rigid body only when the user select should generate rigid bodies the the other one that is really interesting is the way that we calculate bounds in in this code so I was trying to do very complicated things where I was trying to keep track of the shape sizes and then, you know, determine how big the bounding box needed to be. And it turns out that you can just use bounds that encapsulate and then basically pass in the render that bounds. And this method, what it will do, it'll grow the bounds as you basically pass in different bounds. So if I'm creating a cell one where bounds, the size of the bounds are 50, that's gonna add 50 to it. If I create another cell, it's gonna add 50 more. Now it's gonna be 100. And let's say that it was 50, 50, 50 on X, Y, and Z. It's basically gonna keep track of that, that size and it's gonna grow as I call it, which is really helpful because all I really that I needed to do was expose a property called bounds of type bounds that is returning that value. Then on the grid line, and I know that I'm throwing a lot of information at you, but this code is checked into, into source control. 
So if you're curious about something and you didn't understand it, go ahead and look it up and then download it and, and try it out. And feel free to ask me questions through the comments. But the grid line, it's the one that is basically consuming the, the bounds. So what I'm doing here is I have a link back to that class and it's serializable. So you have to associate it to the inspector. And then if you notice, I'm doing grid, grid with params, bounds, center, and also grid with params, bounds, that size. And that's what allows me to calculate, you know, the bounds of the surrounding box. So, so that's how this grid line works. I'm also adding a, a grid offset. And that's what I showed you before. We could change this and it'll basically change the, the size of the, the size of the grid. If I go ahead and regenerate it, and let's say that we wanted to offset it on X, I could change that. So that's what that other value is that you're seeing being added to the bounds that size. So let me go back to here. So that's basically most of everything I that, that I added to add cell is basically just reading information from a, script, a scriptable object instead of private variables. And I'm also calculating the bounds like I just explained to you. And then the clear all change a little bit. Um, I'm also ensuring that if the grid, you know, the double, the multidimensional array is, you know, if it's being defined and it has any items in it, I go ahead and clear it out. And just in case if clearing them out didn't remove the game objects, I'm also going through the transforms and then deleting them by using this other routine. So that's that piece. And I think that's everything for the most part that I work on. So that's everything that I, that I wanted to show you. So for the next videos, what I'm gonna be showing you is I want to refactor where these shapes are located. I've been moving them into a new folder called shapes. And then, so I'm gonna be reorganizing some of these. And then I'm also gonna start working on regenerating procedural roads and adding a new, basically a layer implementation to this grid so that you can add layers if you wanted to for different areas such as, or items such as street lights, roads, cars, and different items that we may place in this in this grid so that's everything guys thank you all right guys thank you very much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions please let me know also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me patreon.com where i'm basically posting early access to source code and also what i'm doing behind the scenes so thank you very much for watching guys